Hello and welcome back to the What The Fork Sunderland Review Show. It was yet another great win for Sunderland and Tony Mowbray as the lads made it two wins from two in a week with a well-deserved 2-1 victory over Birmingham City thanks to goals from Trey Hume and Ahmad Diallo. <laughs> We're going to get into it, as always. As you can tell, I'm probably quite happy. My throat's been knacking me today, but I'm pleased to let you all know it's not because of shouting or drinking. It's just my hair fever kicking up in the air. Uh, the pollen count in Sunderland was pretty high today. But um, enough of that, first and foremost. Uh, Ross, you've been away for far too long. Um, how are you doing, Ross? Are you all right? I am good. It's good to make a comeback. People must just think I just wait for us to win games and come back, but I'd, I promise you that's not the case. I'll back you up. That's only fair, but uh, must be honest and say our second guest is far superior to you, Ross. Uh, despite that, uh, by the name of Bradley Sharp. Brad, how are you doing? You all right? I am good, mate. Um, very, very happy after the last couple of results. Um, my prediction of fifth is starting to look like it might come true. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed, indeed. Um, it is the hope that kills us after all, but um. Brad, I'll, I'll stick with you in terms of the game. Obviously, two wins in a row. We've done it a few times this season. Uh, I think a home win was probably needed just in the context of the season, forgetting everything we've just spoke about before. But um, it felt big today and it felt like a good win. Uh, what did you make of the, the game and, and, and what you've seen? Um, yeah, it's a very, very big win. I think we spoke about it last week, Sin. Um, we need to go into these two and have to pick up maximum points in our last three games of the season is going to make it very, very interesting. Um, I didn't think first half we were particularly great. I thought we were a little bit slow, a bit pedestrian. Um, but I'll tell you one thing today, credit to Tony Mowbray with the substitutions because I think they had a hell of an impact. I think when uh, O'Neill and Gelhart came on, we just injected a, a little bit of energy in the team. and Yeah, Um credit where it's due with Mowbray there because I think the substitutions worked absolutely excellently. Um, yeah. Then the, I mean, the the character in the last 10 minutes down to 10 men, um, I think it was a little bit backs against the wall at one point. Uh, not, 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 not like getting peppered, but I think it was just a little bit, it was in the fans' head like last week. We, we threw it away with a couple of seconds to go. And it's credit to the lads, they stood strong. Um, and the experienced lads really, really dragged us through that last 10 minutes. And yeah, I'm absolutely delighted. And makes Tuesday now, like, you say the next game's the biggest one, but Tuesday is like unbelievable. Um, I just hope that the, the, the stadium can be rocking. And look, if we if we go and pick up three points again, to us failed. The last couple of results have went for us with all teams around us. Um. Oh, what a final few games of the season it could be, eh? Yeah, it's nice, you know, it's nice to be exciting. Um, talk about it for weeks of can we do it? Can we do it? Look, I'm not going to give you our opinions just yet. I want you to stay on for a little bit longer than 10 minutes, but um, interesting last four games at the very, very least. Ross, big win today. Like I say, you know, it's um, it felt good. The stadium was rocking today. It felt really, really good. What did you make of the the performance, the the result, most importantly, and and obviously where it leaves us with four games to go? Results wise, absolutely massive. You know, just to keep grinding out them wins, a bit of brilliance one for us. I don't think in general we were great, if I'm being honest. But right now, I don't care as long as we win games of football because I think right now, the points on the boards all that matters. We I thought we played brilliant against Hull and we got a point. I thought we were very hit and miss today and we got three points. So. I'm quite I'm quite happy with the three points. I think Brad's covered a lot of bases there where if we ground out. I thought the subs were great. I thought Gelhart gave us a brand new impetus. I thought Clark was quiet for the majority of the game, but then he puts that ball across to Ahmad and just bits of brilliance by individuals won us the game a day. Um Birmingham were plucky. I think that's a word I'd use. They were very plucky. They had a, a few quick players on the wing and they had a big lad up front in Jigawitz who, for the first time this season, I think we could say, Danny Bard got done in the air quite a lot, which was very surprising. That's how good he is in the air. But um, but I, I think, all in all, we, a, bit, a bit of class, one for us, and that's Amad Diallo, he's just class. And we, we need to enjoy him for the last few games we've got him because... There's no way, in my opinion, he should be playing championship football next season. Let's hopefully we get promoted and he and he comes with us on the 
on the journey. That's my only hope because especially kissing the badge at the end, the little tease that I he know. is. I know, I know, and I don't know if anyone's seen, but look at nine like bowing down to him as well. <laughs> it was um, but Bless. I mean, yeah, look, I would love him to stay for all of the reasons that all of you are listening to this know. Um, but the kid's absolute quality, like he is above the level that we're playing at at the moment. I've said it before, but he just takes the pee sometimes. It's funny. I didn't actually, this is going to sound weird because of course I did celebrate it, but it was more fist punch when he scored today. And it was because, and the lads that next to me can back this up. The minute Jack Clark pinged that 40 yard or over and he controlled it, I went, go. I went and watch this, go. Because I knew as soon as he had that kind of like space to run into, that that there's no fullback in this division or no defender's going to cope with him with Diallo running at you like that because he's too tricky, he's too strong, he's too direct, he's too fast. And I just knew if he just had a minute to drop his shoulder, he was going to bang in the bottom corner. And when it went in, it was more a case of, I knew that was coming. I knew as soon as he had a bit of space, that was coming. Um, but I'll stick with you on this one, Ross. Look, I don't think we're going to say anything out of the ordinary that no one else could say already. But what what can you say about Ahmad Diallo? What, what, what can we say that would you know pay him justice to how good he's been this season? Um... Look at the goals he scored, like the two goals in particular against Birmingham. Birmingham must be sick of the sight of him. Like he scored two absolute. He's he's won both games on his own. Let's be honest, and there's nobody I'd want more to get the ball running at our a fullback in this league than Ahmad Diallo, and I think that's the biggest compliment you can give him. Like he, he but he, he's. He scores all different types of goals, but it's not just that, it's his link up player. Like the link up player between him and Roberts first half, like it sometimes it was like, Oh, this is Shan on their fullback. You know what? I've always, I've, I've always said about him and uh, Roberts when when they play, and I think I might have said it once before, right? It's like being back at school, let's let's take a trip down memory lane. And then at dinner time you'd see a couple of year elevens jump on the pitch uh, on the Astro turf with a bunch of year sevens, and there's like 10 year sevens chasing after two year 11s trying to get the ball off them, and it just looks funny. It's just like, why are you even trying? Because you, you just look silly against it, and like they're an absolute joke. And to be honest, like you just said there, Grim, is he going to come back? Probably not. Would I love him to? Yes, I've it's been an absolute pleasure to watch him this season because he's just been an absolute joke. He isn't, he's, he's, I have no doubt he will play at probably the highest level. He's was he still 20 year old. He's still a baby. It's oh, amazing. He's, I mean, that point, This it was weird. It's like someone said the day, you know what he's going to do, but you can't stop it. And I think his link up, him and, him and Roberts, there was that moment in the first half today, which I think is on Twitter at the minute, where they were just like flicking it about. <laughs> it was like, lads, like you, you cannot just do that, but you actually can. Um, and I just feel, I mean, I, I'm trying to think of players that got me off my feet the minute that the ball landed at their feet in recent years. And I'm thinking Sessegnon played for PSG and, of course, a much bigger club in Sullivan. Um And Mal Bronk, who was maybe a different kind of player. But I cannot think of that many until I go back into like the late 90s and I'm talking like Alan Johnson that have got me off my feet the way that, that he's done. McGeady, maybe, but like at a lower level. For me, Diallo, in terms of undulterated talent, and certainly Patrick Roberts as well, are like, I don't know if I'm giving too big of a compliment here, but I haven't seen anything like that for years. The combination play between them and the individual own talent, I'm just like, that's Premier League quality. And I know there's going to be other people listening to this going, oh, something will rate them. Both of those lads cost upwards of 50 million when they were in the teenage years for a reason. Um, Roberts went for 14 million seven, eight years ago. Like, the kid's got so much talent. And alongside Diallo, so the, the lad that's just next to me today said, why they're so brilliant is because they're two steps ahead of everyone else on the pitch. So they know where they're going to be with each 
sort of two, three touches. And when you're that far ahead of yourself with your football and brain, people kind of cope. And I mean, we're winning games at the minute without sending it forward because them two are so brilliant together. And individually, they're creating so much space. I mean, saying that, Rob has missed an absolute sitter today. Like, but um, I'll let him off with that. But they're just both such outstanding footballers to the point where, like, I like Diallo that much that I'm like, I don't think you deserve to play championship football anymore, kid. Like, The thing is, what I'm at as well is, it's his first full year, in my opinion, as a fully pro footballer playing week in, week out. And how many games has he won on his own? You know what I mean? Like, just dragged us out of them, dragged us out of the mire. And he scores great goals. It, but, but as he's all around player, I know this is going to turn out. I'm cast at the minute. There's a name for the podcast, the Ahmad cast. I've we've already had um, two we've already had two Ahmad cast this season, for the record. That just that just that says a lot. How many games that's 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 three games, three pods he's won his own, on his own for us, you know. So I superlatives after superlatives and he was actually, like you say, in like going forward. I think he, he was a bit frustrated the day because he was he was looking for someone to go in behind when we didn't have that player. But him and Roberts just keep possession so well. And the the goal is it's phenomenal. You know what he's gonna do, but he's close control and the way he can finish it and get in behind players, it's it's all right knowing this, but you cannot stop it. And uh, you've said it before, it's it's as simple as that. He's he's class. He joined us a bit late, but he is here. Um listen. We didn't expect him to be coming, but listen, Dave's here. Dave, how are you doing? You all right? Listen, I know I'm a bit late. I know <laughs> I've had a bit here, but I'm here. I'm here for it all. That rhymes, I'm, I'm by the way. Mine, just, just in case anyone's like worried about my dedication to the cause, I'm 20-odd Clem, and I've just had a jog on. I've just had a jog on, and I might not make it until the end of the podcast. So enjoy that, fellas. Yeah, yeah, I'm good, mate. And uh, I wish Sunderland had stopped giving me hope. That really breaks my heart when they let me down. But just enjoying the ride, and it's going to be well. I can't lose. I can't lose because if we finish close to tenth and we've had a flirt with the playoffs, I get Brad's miserable face all over. Like just me memory, and I, I like I say, I'll never rub it in ever again. Whatever, Ross didn't hear stuff. And uh, <laughs> and if we end up with the playoffs, I'm absolutely buzzing my tits off anyway. So I can't lose. You know, we've just said it was going to be called the Ahmad cast, but it might be called the RIP Dave cast. Um, Brad, I'll come on to you because I feel like I haven't spoken to you for a while now because people are just randomly appearing on the podcast now and doing little jogs. Funnily enough, what people don't realise is that we've seen Dave do that jog so we can testify that Dave has run. Um, doing all right, not too bad at all. Fair play. Um, look, I, I, I really just want to talk about Ahmed Diallo, if I'm honest with you, and Patrick Roberts, but let's try and speak about something else. Um, they weren't the only good players on the pitch today. I think, um, for me, Brad, I, I thought Dan Neil had a really good game today. I think he had one of those games where he, he looked impressive and he didn't really mess stuff up, he won the ball back. I thought 09 was excellent when he came on, I thought Trey Hume was great. Um, goal aside, I thought he had a good game again. I thought Gucci was all right. There's a few people who think we weren't that great today. A few of you alluded to that. I thought you we were pretty decent today, if I'm honest. I, I felt confident that we'd win it all game, and that was probably because I felt everyone was at least like a six or a seven. Um, but for me, outside of the names you've mentioned, Diallo and Roberts, I, I thought Daniel was good today. But but who stood out for you, Brad? Um, yeah, like I say, it was it was all when the, the changes were made. I think it was a bit dour until then. Um, great time to get a... Is that the first time we've scored from a corner this season as well? And what in a time the, to in do the it. league. In the league, yeah. Yeah, um, great time to do it. Um, it was a good delivery as well. And I, 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 I think Pritchard's the last couple of games, I think he's went a little bit under the radar. I think he's been very good. Um, but that's... Not nothing on him. I think it's more the fact that the players like Ahmad, Robert, Clark have been getting all the plods, but Pritchard's played his part lately. Um, I think before the red card today, he would have been very close to coming off. I think Equa was going to come on for Pritchard and then he's like reshuffled the pack a little bit. 
Um, and he was fully diver- deserving of playing a full game. I, I, I think Pritchard really impressed me lately, and I think today he was as well. I think his set players were a little bit better. Um, and I just love how he goes on the press. I, it, it seems to be... It, you notice it more with, with Ross Stewart, because Ross Stewart used to push that the first man to go on the press, and Pritchard was always one step behind him and dragging the team forward. But I think Pritchard's experience has been very good lately. Um, but yeah, I'd agree with Dan Neal. I think it was one of his better games today. Um, but it's hard to say that anyone really stood out apart from the, the match winner. You've got Jack Clark at that crossfield ball was absolutely phenomenal. Um, but I, I would I'd go along as well, like you say, with Luke O'Neill because when he came on, I think it just gave us a new bit of energy, and he was throwing himself in front of everything towards the end. But like you said, it's like everyone was a six or a seven bar. Maybe he's one. Um, Dennis Sergen, I think uh, their lad out there, maybe he's had him on strings a little bit, shall we say. Um, yeah. I, was I, it a red card? It, there's there's an argument for it. The, the guy has lifted his elbow. That might be classed as violent conduct as well, but it's two yellow cards, in my opinion. It, it's and Sergen, I think, yeah, I think he was a little bit below par. For me, but everyone else, they've, they've done the part. To me, Sirkin looked like a player that maybe hasn't played for a few weeks. If that makes sense, I thought I did. I did think, mind. I thought it was was it Chong. Is that is that the pronunciation? Yeah, he 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 looked good. Like I thought he was decent today, but he kept like cutting in on. He kept cutting in. I was like, stop. Like, he's going to cut in. Like you know, he's going to cut in. But he was a bit like a, a Diallo in the sense that it's quite hard to stop. Regardless of that, could use. I said, I, I think he's very similar to Diallo. Uh, um, maybe he's not to that as quality as what Diallo is. Um, he, he is very similar, and I dare say, from what I have seen, I didn't see all the game. Um, I was at work, but I've seen a lot of it and listened to a lot of it. And I dare say, he's probably put one of the better performances I've seen from any player at the stage like this season. I think, I think it was really, really good. Um. I wouldn't be opposed to actually having a look at him if Birmingham need the money, you know. Or is he just a loan player? He's a, he's a loan for Man United, isn't he? Is it? Well, for Man United, one of loan us, him as well. Um, I wouldn't be opposed to that because, I, I, yeah, I mean, I know we're trying to talk about Sunderland, but I was very impressed with him. Yeah, I thought I thought he was really good as well, I think. And I mainly mentioned it because I thought, like, Sergin maybe wasn't massively on his game today. There's reasons for that, like, don't get me wrong, but I also thought a lot of that was to do with the fact that he was really, really impressive. Um, Dave, me and you chatted this about this during the week, so I'm going to throw this one to Ross, um, because I disagreed with you about Jack Clark. I do want to point something out here just to prove why Jack Clark is great. I said, I think Jack Clark's been our player of the year. I know some people disagree with that, and that's fine. Um, Talk point of being a fan and an opinion. But Ross, that was Jack Clark's 20th goal contribution today. We've scored 60 goals in the league this season. So I think by my calculations, he's been involved in a third of our goals. He was quiet today. Moment of magic, we've touched on it before. Uh, Diallo and Roberts are going to get all the praise. But again, Jack Clark in a weird way kind of flies under the radar with the numbers that he brings in. I agree. I thought he had to do a bit more defensive duty to help Sirkin out here due to the performance of Jong, which meant when we transitioned and got the ball forward, he had to make up that extra 10, 20 yards, which helped their defence get set. Um, Little things like that. But I thought he was, like you see, that, that crossfield pass for Amma was tremendous. It's bits of quality, you know what I mean? How many how many times have we seen just bits of quality win us games and little, little moments? And you mentioned there with... Uh, with Clark, how many goals he's been involved with. A lot of it, like you see, some games he can frustrate the life out of you, but then he'll do something and will score. That's what wingers are, especially at championship level. You know what I mean? Like he, He's got a bit of brilliance that can unlock defences. And if he was doing it, if we're being honest, if he was doing it every round, like every time he got there, and every time he got round a defender, and every time he wouldn't be in the championship, he'd be playing the Premier League consistently. So, at He's how old is he? Twenty? Someone correct me. 20, 20, 20, 21? 21 maximum. Max. He's a young lad who's been dealt a bit of a shit card by Spurs. Let's be honest. 
after they bought him and basically were promised from the world, like, are you going to come here? You're going to play and all that. He's went up a level from what we had him last season and he's got better. We cannot really ask for much more for someone who we brought in who was expected, especially from the other loans in the Championship, just to to be a bit part. Because if I'm being honest, when we re-signed him, I was like, yeah, I'm pleased with, you know what I mean, he's done all right, but I'm not sure if he's going to start every week. He's, 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 he hasn't missed many games. He's probably been one who's been there nearly every game this season. I mean, I'm looking at just days 22, but I'm just looking through his stats like before he came to us last season. He played 22 games for Leeds. He didn't play any for Spurs. Then he played one game on loan for Leeds after they got promoted, I think. Six games at QPR, 14 at Stoke, 17 for us last season. He's played 40 games this season. Um, I'm not sure if that's league or not. I'm just looking at Wikipedia. I'm not like looking too in depth, but it's the first real full season he's played, and he's produced 20 goal contributions. Like that's if he could, and I know that the fee might rise to 10 million. I understand that if he gets like international caps, goes to World Cup, and all that kind of stuff. I think the maximum we've paid for more points 3.5 million, and I do think that's also not an installment, but not paid all up front. If you give me someone who would give you a third of your goal contributions for a team pushing towards the playoffs. That was 21-22 when you signed him for 3.5 million. That's a bargain. Um, Dave? Especially when you add in as well, as a winger, sorry, but as a winger, for three quarters of that season, he hasn't had any striker to aim for. No. When he's beat his man. So, (laughs) he's had to, for the the goal contributions assist-wise, he's had to work a bit hard for them. Dave, I'm going to go against Something we've spoke about a lot here, right? And I know there'll be people going out about X, Y, and Z. But the past couple of games, you know what I've not noticed as much? The lack of striker. I don't know what it is. I don't know why I've noticed it less. So the question I'm going to throw at you, Dave, is have we learned how to play without like a centralised normal striker? Are we just at that point now where we, we've done it for that long, we're actually managing to cope and perform well without one? I'm going to go with no, because I was whinging it about it for the first half. Um, Pritchard should have put us 1-0 up. And with the centre forward there, we would have been 1-0 up. Um, of course, the pundits will turn around and say it was great defending, but he shouldn't have had a chance, to be honest. So we're making things more difficult for ourselves by not having one. Um, the one thing I was really impressed with considering not having a centre forward was the way we managed the game after going down 10 men. I was quite impressed by that um, and Pritchard and stuff helped us out massively in that couple of minutes. Um, but it, it's just the work that they do. I, I had a conversation with my old man today actually and I said you know it's not just about the fact that we're missing Ross Stewart. We all know how much I love him. We all know how much I fanboy him and stuff like that. But it's just the 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 miss of a centre forward who works the defenders, who keeps the ball, who's got that bit more physicality and stuff like that. So the results are going slightly better, and where you can't argue, can you? If, if the if the results are better, then we're obviously learning to play without one, and that's fine. I just think we could be making our lives a little bit easier if we did have one, but. <sighs> Listen, what a roller coaster again! It, it's it's absolute bliss, isn't it? To to be to be in with a fighting chance, and I am worried about Tuesday night because we all know what Warnock brings to the table. We all know that they're going to shit house their way through the game. They're going to slow it down. They're going to kick us up a height when we've got the ball in the final third. So on, so forth. We all know the dark or. Art, and we all know how people like Warnock get results and stuff like that. They're massively playing for something because Red and uh, are right on their court tails. But what a ride. Like, you know, that we've said and banged, banged on about it for the last 18 months. The resilience, the morale, the, the togetherness, every single cliche you can throw at it. Is just there in abundance. Um, 
no matter what we do, no matter how we do it, it's just a privilege to watch them. Um, simple as that. And with the set, it, it just makes it even more special that we're doing it without a centre forward. I just kind of hope that we <laughs> that we go one way or the other. If we're gonna keep us all hanging on with hope and and things like that, I hope we make it. I hope we sneak in the sixth spot because every single person who's been there all season, who's watched every game, who's cheered, who's watched from afar, it was international fans day to day. You know, there's people from Canada tuning in every week. They're flying halfway across the world. Every single one of us deserves a, a punt at it. I know Ross Score said yesterday, was it? Like, I don't want to get beat off Borough in the playoffs. I'm not being funny. We've played Borough twice this season and there's not a single thing to be scared of. Listen, they're in... Well, I don't suppose they are in form anymore. Luton's the form team of the playoffs at the minute. But I, I don't fear anyone going into that if we manage to sneak into it. And for as many shit stories that we've had coming down the leagues and back-to-back successive relegations, what a nice way it would be for Sunderland to just have a bit of a fairy tale and go the other way. Double I'm all for it. I think, I think with the playoffs as well, and I said this today, look, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm going to say I don't think we're going to make it. I think our fixtures are tough and I don't want to kind of pee on anyone's chips with that. I think they are tough. I think Huddersfield's fighting for their lives. West Brom weighs a hard game. Watford's not easy. Um, and I think Preston weighs a tough game. I think if you're around Sunderland, as well as we're playing, you go, mm, they're tough games. Um, so I don't think we will. But if we do, if we do go into the playoffs, if we can get into them, get results against Huddersfield, West Brom, Watford, Preston, we go, we must, we must go into that playoff chase as the form team. So I'm going to see if we get in them, we've got a chance. And that's the big thing. If we don't, I said it a few weeks ago, it's all right. It's been a good season. I didn't expect us to get in the playoffs this season. I know I've said a few times on this podcast, you can't pick and choose when to go up, but I'm kind of, I think I'm at peace now with the fact that like, fair enough, Stewart got injured, Sims got recalled, didn't sign a striker. There's been games where we could have been close to automatic promotion if we'd fixed little things like that, let alone playoffs. But that's not the case. And, you know, I'm not, can't cry over spilt milk. Ultimately, I've really enjoyed it. Don't think we're going to get in the playoffs. But if we do, then it becomes really interesting. Um, Brad, I'll, I'll throw the same sort of question at you about the, the striker thing and then also the, the playoffs. Um, when, apart from Burnley away, best side in the league, when it's back to the wall, Brad, right? I don't know if you can answer this question. But when was the last time Sunderland didn't score a goal in a league game or a cup game for that? If you know. When did we last not score? Outside of the game against Burnley, because obviously that was a nil-nil. I didn't know, because I think we scored 22 off the belt, didn't we? Uh, before the Burnley game, so... Are we going back before the World Cup, maybe? Um, yeah. 5th of November, Cardiff at home. Well, there you go. It's that, amazing. That's it's, an unbelievable like, stat, considering we haven't had a striker for so lo- so many of those games. The talk of the season is, is our lack of striker, and for us to do that and be the fourth top scorer in the division is a credit to every single one of them. Mowbray, the coaching staff, the players, but all stepping up and at least giving us this season how how, how it's going to end, we don't know, but they've, they've, they've put us in with like four games to go of us all dreaming. And having that little bit of glimmer of hope, um, I believe we will make the playoffs. Uh, but like just said there, if we were, it would be the farm team. I think there's anyone of six can still make it. So the team that's going to get in there are going to fully deserve to get in there. Um, and they will be the team going into the playoffs in form. I hope it's us and I do think it will be. And I think we'll absolutely spank the bow over two legs. And there'll, there'll be some sort of fairy tale where we won't expect it, but then the players will come out at the stage and light in the second leg against Boa. Uh, but we'll note there's only 10 and then we'll hear Stone Cold's music and here comes Ross Stewart for his comeback and we'll just whisk him. And uh, it'll be like, wow, <laughs> the pop, the, the reaction. And it's just going to be like 
fucking get this on Netflix now, you bastards. Um, but yeah, and I just want to point out, Brad, that this is the opinions of Bradley Sharp, not the opinions of What the Falk podcast, um, or anyone else associated with it that we will spank the borough. Um, I don't think that we will, but uh, that is the opinion of Bradley Sharp and not those of What the Falk or my employers. Yeah. Um, and I do believe it and don't worry I'll change my Twitter to say my views are my own so it doesn't come back on you when I look silly but yeah I, I'm I'm confident we'll do it and then I'll be the one that's looking at Dave saying start the season I got my prediction right and you didn't and you were a little bit pessimistic Um, so yeah I, I, I think we'll do it mate I really do I think we're going to use I think this is going to be the point of the season where actually we do back to back to back wins and follow that up with back to back to back to back wins and then et cetera, et cetera. I'm just I'm I've just got a feeling. I do. And the the the, the reason I feel that optimistic is because the team, the club has gave me that optimism. And yeah, I'm all I'm I, I think it's gonna happen. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I've still loved every single minute of the season. Well not every single minute. But I'd say about two hundred minutes of football this season. I've loved it and it's been great to watch. Let's just yeah. we can finish it on a high and then go to Trafalgar Square on Friday the 26th of May. Um, Get your hotels booked because mine being booked this evening. We did actually have them booked before, but we booked for the Sat- the Sunday. I think it'll be on the bank holiday Monday, but it's actually changed. So we've changed our hotel booking tonight because I'm not confident we're going. Um, Again, this is the opinions of Bradley Shop, not that of What The Fuck podcast. <laughs> um, yeah. Ross... I know you went on the podcast after it because I don't think any of us really wanted to do it, if I'm honest. But um, got beat off Rotherham, got beat off Coventry, got hammered at home off Stoke, and we kind of went, uh, all right, playoffs hopes are just not going to happen. And I know we've had different opinions on this and whether we think we can or we can't. Either way, after that game, I think it was me and Brad, eh, no, sorry, it was me and Dave, we went oh, Norwich away, Sheffield United at home, Luton at home. And then Burnley away. Oh God. Seven games since the um Stoke game. One defeat, Sheffield United, offside goal. Um look, whatever happens moving forward. Like I said, I don't think we will make the playoffs. I think the games are too tough. I think we've probably dropped unfortunately too many points in games like the whole game, Bristol City and all that kind of stuff. But ultimately it's another massive response at a time when we worried. And I've lost count of how many times the players have responded to this and put in a run and just gone, you know what, I cannot fault you. Um, look, we we try not to be too positive. We try not to be too negative. But, but Ross, I'm going to leave you with kind of the final word here on this one. How much praise do these players deserve, not just for the skill and the talent that they've shown on the pitch, but they're just like almost relentless enthusiasm towards ensuring that they don't lose games and they always give us something? I think we've, I think we've got a great group of players, young lads who are, a lot of them, first season at the Championship, we've got a lot of experienced lads who have been there and done that and are really enjoying the football we're playing. Um, as you mentioned, after the Stoke game, they took a lot of pelters. Um, shows a lot of character to come back and perform the way we have. We've performed in different ways since then as well. You look at the Burnley away game, we had to dig deep. Um, the whole game, which was swashbuckling, end-to-end stuff. And then the Cardiff game and today, where we've had to dig in and grind out a result. And we've proved that all over the season that we can... Uh, we, can we can perform... Sorry, Brad's really caught me off guard there, you know. We'll have to start that one again. Brad has put something about us being nine points ahead of Alex Neil, which made me feel really, really happy. And I've lost all track of thought there. I've lost myself. But I we're mint. End of. Well done, Brad. You win that one. Try and edit that one, Graham. Or leave it in. It's funnier. I'm leaving it in. I'm leaving it in. Um, but yeah, it's like yeah, I think it comes to try to summarise these things and we try to chat about it but you know what ultimately like I'm just delighted with four games from the end and it's mad we're talking about like the playoffs um, considering the things that Can I've I had against us Can I do a quick shout us. out No Quick shout out for Anthony Patterson today 
Oh, right, if it's for Pat, oh, I. I thought you were going to say it for, like, your mate or something, like some kind of cool thing. No, no, Patterson, Patterson save down the bottom, bottom left. But I was behind it in the north stand. And it looked, it literally, like, he, his body shape, the striker, looked like he was going to bend it round. And I think it even caught Patterson off guard, so he had to get down really late. And it was a quality left-hand save. And what I've been really, really impressed with Patterson over the last few games is the one criticism this season was, Crosses, he, he he's very weak under crosses. He came out loads under pressure against a side with a lot of big lads, and he just punched the ball away, and it got us up the pitch. And I just think he's getting better and more confident every game he plays. Yeah, I'd never really had an issue with Pato. Um, it's kind Ooh. of it's got to a point where I I just feel it's normal for him to make great saves and have good games, which is a compliment to him. He's just a seven out of ten every week. I think Patterson will also be here next season because the only team that was expressing an interest in him paying some money was Leicester um, and they're going down. So I think Patterson will be here next season as well. Um, and that's that's massive for us. Just going to put that there. Such a huge fan of Brad making all the outlandish statements. Today. He's going to have Leicester fans on his back, Borough fans on his back. Maybe I should just not invite Brad back anymore. Um, that's fine. That's fine, Graham, because uh, next season we won't be in the same division as both of them because we will be Premier League and them two will not. Wow. Just wow. Once again, <laughs> they are the views of Brad. <laughs> this is the podcast <laughs> title of this is It's the Views of Brad Sharp. Um, but lads, thanks as always for joining. It's always just great to be as positive as we have been. Um, it's getting a bit silly in many ways. How many of these episodes have just been positive about and, and we felt positive and we've kind of just said how great the lads are. And you know what? I'm not wanting to pat ourselves on the back here, but I think as fans, four years in League One, a double relegation, it's at least we deserve to have just a season where things don't make us want to put knives and forks inside of our eyes um, at how bad things are on the pitch. It's it's great future, at least on the pitch, feels very, very positive. Um, and I'm, and I'm buzzing for it. Quickly before I let sort of everyone go though, uh, I want to ask a quick question, and I'll just I just want your answer straight up. Four games to go, no pussy fighting around it, Ross. How many points? That's all. I want, I just want a number. Seven. Dave. Six. Brad. Twelve. Ten. Grim. Ten. I'm going to go a bit more confident. Right. How are the lads? Exciting either way, though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, thanks so much for joining us, lads. Appreciate it. All the best, bud. Feels quite All abrupt. All the best, gents. Feels quite abrupt. Sorry. How are the lads? <laughs> Goodbye.